Most teachers I know have a goal, and this includes myself, a goal of meeting the needs of every student that comes in your classroom. Um, that's where my heart is, and over the years I've tried to study as many different techniques as I can use. The visual learner, the literal learner, the reluctant learner, the, uh, the kid that needs a song to remember something. You, you look for any technique you have that can engage that child and help them learn. Our students have changed. Uh, I really noticed that kids are a lot more driven by technology and, and speed in their lives and the ability to do lots of different things. Um, whereas I don't know that our school is necessarily adapted in that way. Well, throughout history, the way that uh, education has taken place is that it's been very unidirectional. Students all face in this direction, the teachers over there in that direction looking at the students. The teacher has the knowledge base. The students pay attention in that direction, absorb the knowledge, and then that's how the inter interaction takes place. That format certainly works for, for certain lessons. You know, if you're going to give notes or you're going to take a test, and I don't think those things will disappear from curriculum ever. Today, there are so many different knowledge bases, not just the teacher, but through computers. This year, our students will be on a one-to-one -one laptop program. Uh, there's so many different uh, types of technology, like video and so forth, that may take place throughout the room. If I could bring those tools in, I am really excited about the idea of collaborative learning, about 21st century technology, to create workers for the future um, that need this collaborative setting and this, uh, this vision of problem solving. Information is at their fingertips, but problem solving is what we've got to be about here at school. It's imperative that we learn about each other and that we break down some of those limits. And right now, the way our building is set up, um, it's very easy for students and staff to isolate themselves and to, um, to not form community, to not reach out, to not serve each other. What we were starting to see now is something not that would change what we taught, but how we could teach it. So for instance, I could imagine my classroom being a problem-solving based classroom now. If I had the classroom of the future with the technology of the future um, and I wanted to stress collaboration and I wanted to stress um, problem solving, what I would do is envision a classroom where kids were divided into collaborative groups and I've got um, a problem. And maybe I'm not in the front, maybe there's no front to my classroom at all anymore, but I'm in the middle of the class with a slate. And I've, I'm writing a problem on there and it's being projected around the room. Now the groups will work at that problem and they also have plenty of ways to post their solution. There's not that pressure of, would you please go to the front and show us your answer. Instead, it's really interactive. There are places all around the room that groups can display their work, their answers. Maybe they didn't even get an answer, but they can show us how far they got before they got stuck. But it's totally learning from each other, not always learning from me. So every group can see what every other group has done, and that's seamless. It's not a big deal. To give students space uh, to be conversational, um, whether that means our first year